Howdy, if you freak out, it's Miss Cash. I think this is the fourth video uh, that I have made while hanging out here during my planning period at the end of the day. Um, from that was more information than you needed, but you're welcome. Um, I'm working unit one questions from Mr. Passwater. Um, not everything. If I make mistakes, sorry, comment below, tell me what's up. Um, this, I have not looked at these problems ahead of time. So you are watching me think in real time and I'm deciding which problems to do in real time. So for better or for worse, uh, hopefully this is helpful and adds good to the world. So here we go, um, because good is worth it. <laughs> okay, the graph of this function is concave up on the interval, which of the following? So concave up tells us that our average rate of change can't be constant, it has to be increasing. Okay, so notice one, two, three, four, five. That's encouraging. Okay, so the average rate of change, what did we do? It's three, it's three, it's three, it's three. So this is not concave up because that would be linear. Um, and a linear graph doesn't have a concavity. Okay, so what's happening here? We went down one, we went down three, we went down five, we went down 10. Uh, that is, um, so to go from here, we subtract the average rate of change here was negative two negative, the average rate of change to the average rate of change. <laughs> anyway, the answer is not that. Um, because it, concave up, that means the average rate of change needs to be increasing. The average rate of change was decreasing. Okay, so here, what did we do? We went down 10, we went down five, we went down three, we went down one. How do I go from negative 10 and get to negative five? I add five. This is I add two and I add, um, I add two again. So, well, the average, okay. Oh, okay, so here's what this is telling me. There's not any special sort of dynamic here because this is not constant, um, but these negative 10 is smaller than negative five, which is smaller than negative three, which is smaller than negative one. I think this could be the correct answer. Let's keep going. What did we do here? We added 10, we added five, we added um, three, we added one. But this, this positive, oh, these are the same numbers. That was clever. Um, but they're getting, we're going from a positive number to a smaller positive numbers. Here we went from a negative number. Um, if you think about it on your number line, here's negative 10, here's negative five, negative three, negative one. We were moving in, the, in an increasing fashion. I think I still stand by it that that is the correct answer. Um, which of the following could be a table? Concave down, you know what? This one's very similar to that previous one. Um, okay. So, have I, did we keep going? That was 73, this is 74, okay. Um, so let's see what we're looking at here. The table shows values for this function. What of the following could be true. What's happening? We're going zero, one, two, three, four. That's very nice. What did we do? We went down seven, we went down four, we went down two, we went down one. Okay, so it's, um, they're negative, so that means the graph is decreasing. The values themselves are increasing. So it, we have a, our function is decreasing but concave up. Decreasing, so not those, and concave up because we're getting less negative. These are tricky, you guys. They're just going to take some practice. Um, decreasing, okay, same idea. Decreasing, okay, all of these are the same idea. I'm going to move on. Okay. The figure shows a graph of a quartic polynomial function. How many points of inflection? Um, well, so we're concave up, we're concave down, we're concave up. So we had to change right here somewhere. We had to change, con so our concavity changed, our concavity changed, and then there we go. So we have two points of inflection. Okay, a cubic polynomial function, um, it only has one real zero but that's neither here nor there. Um, how many points of inflection were concave up? We changed to concave down, so there's, oh, not zero, there's one. I expected one to be the first answer. It was not. Um, let's see. The figure shows the graph of a function with the four points labeled where H represents the rate of change of the function. Oh, okay, so they have not, they didn't graph the function, they graphed the, the rates of change of the function, oh dear. Which of the four labeled points has the same x coordinate as a point of inflection? Um, okay, and a point of inflection is where it's gonna go from, um, oh, this is good, you guys, this is good. Let me, I haven't thought about this in a while, so here we go. Okay, so at a point of inflection, it goes from concave up to concave down. 
which means that the average rate of change goes from increasing to decreasing. So we want um, the graph was increasing and then decreasing, or it could have gone the other way. It could have gone from decreasing to increasing, but notice they didn't give us something here. So I think that value, the answer is A. Oh, that was good. You know what? I want to make sure that I'm not lying to you. Oh, well, okay, hang on. Did I say A? I did. Okay, I, he has um, his answer key in more than one file, so that's why it took me a second. Um, that's good. This is good. This is good. Okay. Oh, this is fun. This is different. Okay, so here's what I see. I see a bounce right here, which tells me it has an even multiplicity. I haven't even looked at this. I haven't even looked at the, the equation. And then I see, so this is going to be um, an x minus a negative number squared. So it'll be x plus something squared, and then this is going to be x minus something. And then ultimately it's going down, so I need a negative. So without doing anything, um, so I know that, what, what do I know? I know, let's see, could it be this first one? The graph is negative, and this would ultimately give us a negative leading coefficient. Um, the thing to be careful about be, that I like to write in my tests is that I would do something like three, and then I would do like a four minus x, and then what this really is, um, and then have more stuff, pretend there's more stuff. What this is, is this is three times negative one times x minus four. And so this would be equivalent to a negative three times x minus four. But you think, oh, it's a positive leading coefficient. So be careful with that. But notice, um, Mr. Passwater was not that mean and nasty. So all of his x's are positive. So we don't have to think about that. Because it's going down, we're gonna ultimately have a negative leading coefficient. So those two are out. So what did we say? We had a negative root where it bounced, so it would be a plus in here, and then so that's going to be the, the correct answer. That was fun. I like that. That I like. Um, oh, we already did that part. Okay, let's see. Um, it looks like this is very similar. I see, um, except this has now got a bend right here. It's, it's, um, it's bending at the axis, which means that this will have an x minus a number cubed. There we go. Nope. Um, I, oh, yeah, yeah, there it is, <laughs> like, y'all, don't ever get old, it hurts, I mean, it doesn't hurt, I just couldn't see that there, that was a three. Oh good lord, okay, so this was the, um, it passed through at x equals negative, so this would be the value, the zero x equals negative three, and this would have been the value x equals two, and it's bending, so that's why that's that one. Um, what's the following could be expression, it's going to bounce at the origin, so we're going to have an x squared we're going to have a negative leading coefficient and we're going to go through this looks bigger so this this looks like x equals four and this equal, looks like x equals negative two based on how far apart they are but who knows um we definitely need an x squared and it's definitely negative so i think it would be the minus four plus two i think it would be c that was fun Let's see. Um, okay, so there, which of the following is true? It's an odd function. Ooh, okay. Um, what do we know? If it's an odd function, what does it mean to be odd? It means that g of negative x would be equal to a negative g of x. So it has symmetry where whatever's happening here also happens down there in that quadrant. Um, oh, an even function means that g of x, I lied, g of negative x is what I want to start with, is equal to g of x, which means it has symmetry over the, the y-axis. Okay, so what's happening at 2 and negative 2 is really what we care about. Um, they're, they're opposite of each other. And what's happening at 4 and negative 4, they're opposite. One was positive, one was negative. That means it's going to be odd. So we can eliminate the even. Um, and so g of 1... This was a clever problem. I like how he wrote this. Um, so g of negative 1 is going to be the, the opposite sign of that. So it's going to be the positive 6. Okay, polynomial functions, which the following statements could be true. Okay, what was happening here? Um, there, This is an even function. Yes, okay, so they give us this random 4. So negative 4 would be positive 7, but it's even. Negative 4, positive 7, even. 
Oh, what is the value of a plus b? Okay, so it's an odd function. That means if f of 2, negative 2 is 10, then that means f of 2a would equal negative 10. Where is b? Oh, here's b. What's negative 7? We need to, b is going to be the opposite of the positive 7. Oh, this is clever. This is clever. Okay, so that means that b has to be a positive 4. And when I add those together, I get negative 6. Okay. Ooh. Uh -huh. Oh, inequalities. All I know is I've never solved so many sticking inequalities as I did this year teaching AP Pre-Cal. Yippee. Okay, so what do we know? Well, we can think through, I'm going to kind of, um, I have a zero. I have a zero at zero, negative three, and positive two. Okay, so here's negative three, here's zero, here's positive two. What's the graph doing? It's bouncing here. Um, and it's ultimately positive because there was there's no ne negative leading coefficient. It's, so it's bouncing here, it's passing through here, and it's passing through here. Okay, so where are the intervals? Uh, for what intervals um, is it negative? So from negative 3 to 0. And that's answer choice C. So you could do a sign diagram. Um, that would have been fine too. I just, okay, maybe I'll do the next one as a sign diagram just to change it up. Um, okay, so we have, what zeros do we have? We have zero, four, and negative one. So negative one, oh. Let's plug in a positive one. If I plug in a positive one, I have a negative, a negative, and a, and a positive. A negative times a negative times a positive is a positive, so that's positive. If I plug in five, I have a negative, a positive, a positive. That's a negative. If I plug in... Uh, let's plug in something over here. Well, there's no bounces because we know that, but negative 2, positive, negative, negative is a positive. Well, it makes sense because we're doing that sort of thing. Where is it less than? Um, from negative 1 to 0 and from 4 to infinity. I agree with that. All right, that was the bell. Um, I will be back and keep doing this on another day. So um, there is more to do. That I think I just finished video four. Um, all right, have a great day, go practice. Let me know how I can help you. Let me know if you catch any mistakes. All right, bye.